तंत्र मेघे युवती विरूपे अभ्याक्रामम Day and night weave the six-seasoned warp of the year. First day draws out the threads, then night lays them. And so it goes on until the end of time. Thus, according to the ancient Hindu texts, the gods wove the fabric of the universe, and man helped them. For our rituals were their threads, and our hymns were their shuttles. Since the dawn of time, weaving has been a revered art in India, and warp and weft are considered the two philosophical opposites that come together to form the cosmic oneness. Indian life, and you can hear its echoes in every little village. Here in the deserts of Rajasthan, weavers have woven varis for over two thousand years. The secret of their art passed down from father to son. The varis they wove were rustic. It's striking in their elegance. Some of them would share the simple lives of their makers. Others would end up in the palaces of maharajas. The heartbeat of the loom merging quietly with a drumbeat of history. for the finer things in life. Out of their patronage, there sprang a golden age of art and culture. created down in his own dungeons by thieves and brigands to whom weaving was taught as a gentle and civilizing art. These dharis eavesdropped on gatherings that shimmered with music and poetry, but they eavesdropped unseen. For they themselves were humble underlays for the great palace carpets, destined, it seemed, for oblivion. History rolled on, and the Mughal Empire came, bringing with it a splendid new carpet weaving tradition. And master weavers like the legendary Haji Lokman, whose descendants still continued to practice their craft three centuries later. Then, in 1969, 
something happened that would transform the Dari forever. Shamahuja set out to revive the dying art by marrying it with the art of the carpet, the weave of the Dari, but the richness of wool, and all the skills of a master carpet weaver. That was the basic idea. As a result, the dari that had been locked in time for 2,000 years now entered a whole new phase. The interpretation of the dari today may be contemporary, but everything else about it is ancient. That is the simple truth. The skills that go into it are not learned so much as inherited from one's ancestors. The techniques remain unabashedly medieval. And of course, at every step along the way, one finds a stern, uncompromising craftsman's eye for detail. In order to make sure the purity of the craft is undiluted, the raw materials are sent out to several thousand weavers in their own villages all over India. The task is huge, the logistics complex. So these are the factories, and this is the technology. A single dari can take up to 12 months of a man's life to complete. Each dari then is a piece of living history, from a time and place where trade still often depends on the next camel caravan. Today's Dari's find their inspiration in unexpected places. From the colors of a 15th century town, perhaps. Or from the spread of a peacock's wing. Or from the motifs in a medieval harem. Who can say for sure where an idea comes from? The patterns of Indian village life today find themselves part of a lifestyle that is far removed in time and distance. And the rustic floor covering of a village hut has now become as sought after in Paris as it is in New York, Tokyo or Milan. The Dari meanwhile has been evolving. 
moving from its simple geometrics into patterns of increasing complexity. And along the way, it is sometimes drawn on unusual themes. An old Portuguese tapestry, the ceilings of Versailles. Indeed, who can say where an idea comes from? And conversely, who can say how far an idea will travel? of tomorrow. It has been a long journey for the Indian Dari. But the footsteps of that journey are merely the echoes of an eternal heartbeat. A heartbeat that began with the gods of creation. Bringing together the cosmic warp and weft endlessly upon the looms of time. <laughs> 